after three years, it's finally surfaced. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, my perfect Dean Z is here, and it's way too expensive for me to buy. I'm so sad. But we need to at least talk about this thing. First, a little bit of history. Back in mid-2019, the whole Gibson Play Authentic thing happened, where everybody was basically rallying with the underdog Dean, saying, hey, Gibson, why are you picking on these guys? And I had never wanted a Dean guitar in my entire life before then, because I wanted to document one of the cool 70s ones. A, because people were all of a sudden talking about them, and B, I was just curious, they looked cool. So you can check out my YouTube poop style parody of the Gibson Play Authentic video if you'd like. But here you can see, I was trying to buy one all the way back then. But in searching for these old Deans, I wanted a really nice clean one that didn't have a headstock break, which is very hard to find, and I wanted the Flame Top Z, because that is just the coolest one in my opinion. But I quickly learned that vintage 70s Deans have a big cult following. Anything nice that shows up for around 3000 to 3500 at that point in time just sold instantaneously. So I was looking at stuff like this if and when it did show up, and they'd be wanting like 4000 bucks, and it'd be gone before I could get it. Now sure, the later 70s ones and 80s, a lot of them didn't have the flame tops and binding, but I didn't necessarily want to document one of these. I wanted the big Mac Daddy. I remember Guitar Point had a really nice looking one here. This was the color I was really going for, but the top just wasn't quite crazy. Crazy enough for me to pay like the 4000 they were wanting here. So here we are in 2022. This, look at this example guys, wow. <laughs> I love it. It's got a great color, it's got an awesome top, but it's for sale by Rumble Seat Music. So you know it's gonna have a price tag accordingly, which in this case is $10,500. Now, I'm not a big player in this market. I have some experience from what I was just telling you, so I was expecting maybe a really, really, really nice clean one to be like 6,500. But if you read the description here, this was the ninth one made. So within the first 10 by Dean Guitars, like the official brand when they opened and everything. So that makes this one even more extra special. Now, I'm not enough of an expert within this field to know is that about what we should be paying or is that a really wishful thinking price? Because down here, we've got a 78. Granted, nowhere near as nice looking, and they're wanting 6700 I mean, the whole lawsuit definitely brought a lot more collector interest to these things from groups outside of the normal core collectors. And like, here's another 82 currently for sale at a firm 5500 Again, not quite as nice of a top, a little bit of a different finish, but one of the cool ones. So I wanted to see if these guys were just posting a big price because of what it is. Low serial number, awesome condition, supposedly, and a good top with a good finish. So I did make them an offer. You know, the typical feeling them out. I thought, okay, 6,500, I'm gonna try to document this thing, but it was auto-declined, and they probably wouldn't want to sell it for that anyways. Maybe they're more firmer on their price. Because special pieces like this, generally, dealers will list it at a big price, so they can come down if they need to. But at least I had to throw my hat in the ring a little bit. Because if you're new to my channel, what I do here is I buy guitars, I document them, then I resell them. Or I keep them for my own personal collection with the hopes of opening my museum one day. And I just sold that Ibanez that I said didn't really fit in my collection now. <laughs> Had this shown up a little bit earlier and I bought this, then maybe those things could go together. But what a fantastic example and from a well-known dealer. However, in my experience buying from these guys, they're generally not the best in disclosing the condition of these guitars. They're an old school shop. I mean, you can look through their inventory. They only have like three or four photos of each of these. You're meant to call them and talk to them about all that. Or go into their shop and check it out yourselves. Whereas that's not my personal style. I just like to list everything in the description that I can or make a video about it. So here's a little bit more to the story. Apparently, I missed this guitar two years ago. When I was researching for this video, I I was so sad and mad when I found this. It's like, no, that's like the perfect timing when I would have wanted it. It's about the price that I could have seen myself paying. We can see once again, serial number nine. It's a perfect fit for all that. So let's take a look at these photos to see what kind of condition there is, since these photos are a little bit more candid in nature rather than showboaty. Like Rumble Seat's photos are cool, right? don't really do a good job of showing you the true condition of the guitars. So it appears two years ago, this thing kind of showed up in disarray. Somehow we have a really extra long string left on this one. The fretboard was all gunked up, but I'm sure that's been cleaned by now. But you've got a little bit of wear and tear, some scratches, nicks and dings on the top. But for one of these old Deans, I mean, the condition is pretty good. 
but it looks like there's some dings on the headstock right here. And then they also noted that there was a finish blemish from where there was foam in the case. But the seller said that might have been able to be buffed out. So maybe that was taken care of between now and then when this thing was first sold. Looks like there's a ding right here on the top. So a played guitar, but by no means mint condition or anything. And now we can read Harry's description here. He says he's owned it since the 80s. And that's cool. So that's almost original owner. It sounds like he might have bought it used at some point in time. But to find one of the first 10 within that, that was cool. I really regret missing that because apparently this went to somebody who kept it in their collection for a couple of years and then they've now sold it to Rumble Seat Music. They did not find it here. So that tells me, I bet the shop has like five to six and a half thousand dollars into this guitar. But if you're interested in making an offer on it, you can check that link in the description and you can check out on Reverb and support the show at the same time because that is a great piece of Dean history and kind of Gibson history in a roundabout way. But since we've got some time left today, let's see, is there anything else interesting in their inventory? Well, it's hard to say no to hardly anything in here, but all right, I'll just pick some out. We'll start off with this Dean ML. I'm betting this was traded in by the same collector or sold to them by the same guy because they were listed at very similar times. Maybe they found them at a guitar show or something and they were selling both of these vintage Deans. Now the ML, it doesn't necessarily appeal to me, but you know, it does if you like Dimebag Daryl and things like that, but that is a really cool looking one. Generally, finish checking like this on an all white body would kind of turn me off, but this has a cool vibe to it since it's vintage and it's got the black binding. Really helps make a stark contrast there. I love that off white aged look we've got around here. Next, we have a familiar face. I was kind of surprised when I saw this thing show up at like a legit dealer. It's one of the mod collection guitars. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of success in selling this one, but I'd be curious. Did they buy this or was it traded into them like for something else? Because I have been seeing a lot more shops actually just buying the demo shop things to put in their inventory just because half the time they are quite interesting and they still have a two year warranty on them. But that's a ticking clock because it's two years since these guys bought it or whoever originally bought it. But basically what makes this one special is, I mean, it's got the vibrato on it. Honestly, this was not my favorite one out of the mod collection, but hey, it's an interesting one nonetheless. But speaking of interesting, custom color 1964 Firebird. What more do you want with this thing? That is nice. The problem with these is you just don't see them that often anymore, especially in good condition. And generally when they do show up, they have like a previous celebrity owner to them. If I remember correctly, this one's from Brian Ray's collection. Yep, that's the same one. So remember Brian Ray's signature SG Jr.? That's a cool guitar. So this one sat in his collection. I wonder what else he has. <laughs> well, you can actually figure that out because Gibson made a video about his Les Paul pool and all of his other guitars. Here's a more modern thing from 2016. So Historic Makeover, if you don't know, you can check him out. Kim over at Historic Makeovers. Basically, he takes Les Paul reissues and redoes them 50s style. But people pay him to do that to their existing guitars, and they pay a princely sum. So if you think $13,000 is ridiculous, it's kind of what it's going to cost. There's a little bit of a premium added to this one because you don't have to wait forever. And because now you get a guaranteed result. That is an awesome top on this. So sometimes he'll do a whole retop, but usually I think they call it the RDS treatment. They put the Brazilian rosewood fretboard on it. They reshave the neck down to what it should be into a proper profile or whatever you want it to be. And they do the full on refin. And sometimes depending on the year of your guitar, they'll even reset your neck with the proper hide glue construction is from what I understand. Stand. So that is a really cool looking piece right there if you're into that kind of thing. But let's get a little funky. So this is a 1981 Ibanez. So we've got a cool Paul Stanley Iceman. Now it's not the mirror top, at least I don't think it is. And generally like the newer modern ones, they don't appeal to me as much, but seeing the original 70s and 80s versions, it's interesting to me because that's like the rebirth of these style of companies into the modern era. I mean, Ibanez is a really old company, but as far as six string popular electric guitars go, <laughs> this is like their birth period. I would have figured that would have been more expensive, but apparently not. Here's a non-reverse Firebird that kind of threw me for a loop. That's nice looking. I generally don't like the style of Firebird, but this is a boutique build by Texas Toast, where they gave it a really interesting wood grain body. It looks like maybe even a tooled leather pickguard or something similar to that. And then dual P90 pickups with like a sawn off Tele bridge. <laughs> That's got some interesting specs. And I like not having any inlays on the fretboard. It looks like it might be rosewood. And you've got some cool bird's eye maple going on for our headstock. The only thing I don't really like is the way the headstock looks on the back. Just kind of reminds me of like a, a cheap knockoff guitar, which this definitely is not being listed at 2,500. 
Next, we've got a Les Paul Artisan. These things have just gotten so hard to find in clean shape lately. Now, this one looks like it might have some blemishes right here. It's kind of hard to tell. You might have to call him up and ask him. But other than that, it appears to be pretty decently clean. Whoa, nice. Flamed maple neck is not a speck on these things, but occasionally you can find it. But sadly, it's only the middle piece. You get a little bit of figuring on the other sides, but that's that makes that one interesting. But you can definitely tell it has some wear and we do not have the original case for it. 84 is a bit high. However, these things have been selling for a lot more. I remember when I first got into these things, they were like the lowest you would ever find would be 2,800 bucks and it'd have to replace parts. But generally top value was seen to be around 4,000-ish. But here we are about five years later, you know, 4,000 is almost considered a deal. <laughs> That's what's nice about this reverb price guide. I mean, you can see what I'm talking about here in 2018 when I start paying attention to this stuff. Good deals. Then 2020 hits, everything starts going up. Whereas currently it looks like clean fetching around six six and a half for the really nice ones i could see something like this in truly mint condition but finding that would be tough but hey speaking of tough here's a left-handed 75 stratocaster they're showing off their cool fender sign i don't think that's included but you will get the other stuff you know what's fascinating about this is there's no stratocaster decal on it it just says fender and it's lefty that's got some pretty cool wood grainage even on the neck and then we'll end things out with a photo flame. We talked about one of these in an auction video not too long ago. Yeah, so all these flames that you're seeing on this guitar that make it look so beautiful, that's just a picture, including the neck. I never knew that about those until I really started to look at these. So if you want like a really cool flamed looking Stratocaster, check one of these things out. They're not all that expensive. I mean, even buying from a high end shop, 1100 bucks. <laughs> Not too bad for something that looks that good. And from a cool year of production. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick one of these things up. I had a few people like offer to loan me theirs, but I think I'd rather just buy it and document my own. That way I can pick out which one I want because there's so many different colors. Where else can you find a green burst Stratocaster? <laughs> that is, that's kind of an ugly guitar, but I like it at the same time. All right, Troglodytes, that's enough for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.